Friends, bring you greetings on this beautiful day and praise God for the gift of this day. For our time to be together and to spend time in the Word and allow the Word to continue to feed us and teach us and shape us in our thinking and in our hearts. So let's dig in today. If you got your Bible, we're going to be in the second, second chapter of 2 Corinthians. Uh, we're picking up at verse 12. So, so now when I went to trust to preach the gospel of Christ and found that the Lord had opened a door for me, I still had no peace of mind because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said goodbye to them and went on to Macedonia. We know that Paul was going to Macedonia. That was his planned trip. He said that to the Corinthians and he told them that on that journey back, he would be bypassing them. So on his way, he ends up in Troas and a door's been opened. He feels like, okay, a door's been opened for him to preach, to share the message, to share the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But he doesn't find Titus there. Apparently, Titus was supposed to be in that city. That's all we can figure out. But Paul is saying to the Corinthians, he's saying, this, is, this was the plan. I ended up in that city. I had an opportunity to meet up with Titus and to be a part of the team of planting the gospel in Troas, but it didn't work out. I didn't find him there, and so I moved on to Macedonia. We don't know the ins and outs of, of exactly why. If God opened a door, why did Paul move on? But it had something to do with working the, the planting of the gospel with his co-worker Titus. We do find that, that quite often when Paul's planting the word, he is doing it with a partner. There's two of them going into a city or more than two of them going into a city and proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ amongst them. And so Paul is still explaining the, the course of his journey to the Corinthian church and still basically laying the foundation that he is not fickle in, in his travels and in his decisions but he is striving to be intentional in responding to, to how God leads him. So, oh, excuse me, let's move on into verse 14, where it says, But thanks be to God, who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphant procession, and uses us to spread the aroma of knowledge of him everywhere. What Paul's doing here is he's using an image to a people under the authority of Rome, the triumphant procession that would occur when, so when the army comes home from war. And it's great celebration. There's incense burned and you can smell the aroma in the streets. And uh, I mean, it's just, it is the aroma of triumph. It is the visual image of triumph. And so Paul talks about this and he says, well, this is what it is for those of us who are in Christ that we are in a triumphant procession, that Christ has proclaimed victory, and we are called and equipped to spread the aroma of the knowledge of Christ everywhere we go. In verse 15, he says, For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To God, we're the pleasing aroma, because among those who are being saved, we are encouragement, we are building up, we are increasing in knowledge, we are... We, we, we are we're teaching and helping those who are in Christ to grow, but we are a, a threat or a terrifying image or, or something that is highly rejected to those who are perishing. Listen to how Paul unpacks it in the, in the next verse. It says, to one, we, we, we are an aroma that brings death to the other, or an aroma that brings life. In other words, when the word of Christ comes, what people experience is the presence of Christ that they either embrace or that they, they perceive as a threat or they experience as a threat, even if they don't know it. Because if you are not in Christ, if you die, you are not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Paul closes it. Uh, he says, and who is equal to such a task? So now he's questioning, like, okay, who has the right to share this or who is equipped to share this? Verse 17, he says, Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ, we speak before God with sincerity as those sent from God. So what is Paul saying? He's saying we're not coming in with some spiritual message that's watered down or manipulated so that we can gain profit from it. He, that is not the purpose of this. We come simply with the gift of the knowledge that God has placed in us. We come with one purpose, one plan. We don't do anything in order to gain profit. We don't do anything in order to gain accolades. We don't do anything. We are here simply sharing the word and sincerity that has been planted in us. 
And so he witnesses this to the Corinthian church. This is all that drives him. And they would, they would take this, they would receive this and realize Paul never took up a collection. Paul never, you know, basically made prophecies or made statements in order to get the financial support from the Corinthians. And so Paul's just establishing this and saying, wherever he goes, he is there for one purpose, to plant the gospel. It's not, it's not for any other purpose. It's not manipulated in any other way. This is a triumphant procession that Paul is involved in. He is part of the parade in which he is going forth with the aroma of the knowledge of Christ. He, like Titus, like Timothy, like uh, Barnabas, like Onesiphorus, like all the others that worked with him, and like Peter and John and James, and they are all, all that given that same charge and equipped in that same way to spread the pleasing aroma of Christ Jesus, the knowledge of Christ, and let that knowledge be that which either brings people to the conviction of celebration, that, that you know, this is the Christ whom they worship and they celebrate and they look forward to you know, seeing his coming, his return, uh, or this is a message of conviction and the return of Christ will spell certain death for those who are not in him. So friends, it has been great being with you today. We're going to continue our journey tomorrow as we begin chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians. Praise God for our time together, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Know that God loves you, and so do I.